the best weapon against people thinking like this is the schools teach people that adjustments will kill people. You got to be careful with adjustments. They're going to sue you. They're going to cause especially cervical adjustments like that of the upper cervical. I'm going to cause strokes and aneurysm. Uh, do you feel any strokes or aneurysms after that adjustment, Doc? It's right in my face. It's feeling okay, well, that's typical, and there's no possible connection anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what people are, are learning. We're not real doctors anyway, so what, what is all this adjustment business? I have a full day seminar on chiropractic neurology and philosophy, actually. In that seminar, I focus on citing all the legitimate medical and orthopedic textbooks who describe vertebral subluxation in exactly the same way that B.J. and D.D. Palmer envisioned it. So D.D. Palmer, of course, 100 years ago said this, pressure on the nerves causes irritation and tension with deranged function as a result. Why not release the pressure? Why not adjust the cause? instead of treating the effects. If you put this statement on, let's say, uh, Facebook, or if you make this statement in, in many of the schools or many of the chiropractic organizations, people will laugh uproariously. This is highly amusing for them. They, they ridicule this fundamental tenet of our profession. Most schools believe this that the effects of vertebral misalignment are limited to an alteration of joint mechanics. Joint mechanics within the vertebrae, you know, the facets. Uh, okay, yes, we can correct some fixations among the facet joints, but don't be talking about anything beyond that, right? Let's not get carried away here. Adjustments affect only those joints. Rabid fear of anything beyond that. Don't be making claims, this is, this is really dangerous territory here, to be talking about chiropractic adjustment having a, an effect on any type of diseases or, God forbid, on autonomic function. No, we really don't want to be talking about that at all, do we students? <laughs> so, uh, in the medical profession, one of the most dangerous mammals walking the earth is the third year medical student with the stethoscope around his neck. Well, there's an, an analogy to that in the chiropractic profession that I've known. There is a, another dangerous species walking the earth and that would be the tenth quarter chiropractic student because now and he is beginning to be drawn into this idea of the science, medical science that he's learning and he really doesn't want to hear anything about innate. So it's no innate for me, please. I'm just interested in the science. That's what they say. So whenever I hear that, I always say this. Okay, let's hear some. Let's hear some. Tell me some chiropractic science. And the amazing thing is, they don't know what you're talking about. They don't know any. What they really do know is they know medical science because that's what the chiropractic curriculum is legally required to teach and that's what the, what the, the questions on all the board exams, that's, that's medical science. But chiropractic science, we don't have time to teach that. What is that? When you put these ideas forth to successful chiropractors who have had practices for many years, they just kind of laugh and, and, and they're like, why don't they get that? It's so self-evident, it's so obvious. So one of the things these people always say is, there is no scientific evidence that subluxation exists. There is no scientific evidence that subluxation exists. That's like a, that's like a mantra, right? My translation of that, when I hear that phrase, the translation of this phrase really means I haven't read anything since I graduated. So here's some of the stuff that you haven't read right here. Uh, the other day, Tim Young is one of my best friends. You know, he's one of the greatest chiropractors in the world. He does a seminar in Oklahoma City every year, Focus, John and I speak there. 
And that's, the, in my opinion, that's the best chiropractic seminar anywhere because it really is a chiropractic convention, right? So uh, the other day, a couple weeks ago, on Facebook, one of these 10th quarter students is uh, criticizing and condescendingly criticizing one of the, the best chiropractors living in the world today, Dr. Young, because how can he see so many patients in one day, right? And what are his tools of assessment? You know, and it, it was knowing him, you know, it was just so funny. It was, it was so ludicrous. And it was this guilt of success that you get from these non-practicing teachers are teaching the students this. Uh, we must spend 40 minutes on every patient or else we're exploiting them. John, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> 40, 40 minutes per patient, right? Aren't you doing an EMG? Uh, aren't you go scoping and do us Westry uh, studies on each individual visit? You know, why not? All we really are doing, here's the bottom line, which you people know this. What is necessary to determine the primary? What am I going to adjust on this patient today? What is the primary? Okay, so <laughs> entirely unknown concepts of service. I mean, what are, what are Tim Young's tools of assessment? There they are, right there. The hands that have been trained on, on a thousand patients a week for however many, 15, 20 years, however long he's been in practice. It's, it's second nature. It's like Yo-Yo Ma. Have you ever seen Yo-Yo Ma uh, playing cello in front of, you know, a thousand people? It's like, he, he stares at the audience. He, did, he, sta he stares at the audience at, and his hands are there in some other, it's non-synaptic communication. It's, it's at another level. It's, you take any art to any level and it's in the, the area of fill in the blank, right? <laughs> Mastery. Mastery. So there's, it's, the, it's the whole 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours of mastery. Joe Satriani. Three hours a day. No, he did like eight hours a day for like 10 years. You do anything, uh, 10,000 hours, you, you are a master of it. Here we have Dr. Mark. Dr. Mark's in Palermo. He, he adjusted 200 people a day, five days a week for six and a half years. So he put in his 10,000 hours. Do you think this guy can adjust? Okay, that's mastery. He'll never forget that. He's on a different level. It's like the Beatles. When the Beatles start, started out at Reeperbahn in, in uh, Hamburg in Germany, you know, they played, like, they played like six hours a day, you know, seven days a week. They did that for years and years. They don't even think when, when they are playing the guitar. So it's the level of mastery. So tools of our art, adjusting skill. Okay, at the beginning we're thinking about facet planes, intrinsic muscles, plane line of disc, scoliosis, joint play, wedging, posture, which is the high side, articulation, visualization, end field, intention, muscle guarding. But I mean, after doing a, a, a 10,000, 50,000 patients or so, you don't have to go through the steps. Your hands go through the steps automatically. This is an art and a skill. <laughs> so here it is, the science of chiropractic. So these these people, they talk about, don't be talking to me about innate intelligence, just show me the science. Here's the problem here. The science of chiropractic is not the science of medicine. That's all the schools have time to teach, is the science of medicine, because that's all the state boards are testing them on. But the science of chiropractic is something completely different. The science of chiropractic is the science of subluxation. <laughs>